Joining me now is a foreign policy expert who was appointed by the Biden administration as an advisor and has been instrumental in the talks between Palestine and Israel. Harley Littman. Harley, welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, so Biden has vowed to hold all those responsible accountable. Uh, the big question is how and when should he do that? Admiral John Kirby just today, like about an hour ago, didn't answer either question. He just said that Biden will respond the way he wants to when he wants to. What do you think? Well, it has to be a really robust response. You have to be able to make the Iranians pay a price that's going to be much higher than the benefit of what they're getting by supporting and initiating these terrorist attacks around the Middle East. This is the deadliest attack on U.S. troops since the attack at the Kabul airport during that botched Afghanistan withdrawal. Let's just take a look back. In, in 2016, the Obama administration transferred $1.7 billion to Iran. Last year, Biden permits Iraq to release billions to Iran, I think it's about 2.76 billion. And then there was the most recent 6 billion made available to Iran during that unequal prisoner swap, despite Iran funding known terrorist groups like Hamas. Has Iran been emboldened over the past few years? Yeah, yes, they have. Uh, our response has not been adequate. Uh, and we could see it. it, it has not succeeded in the region. We have not deterred Iranian aggression, Houthi aggression. It's, it's bigger than ever before. They feel emboldened, and the question is why. I think there are a few reasons. One is they've invested a huge amount of money in their military preparedness and operations, and they feel very confident that it's going to be very effective, and they're, they're right. Also, they feel that the Biden administration, from their perspective, is weak. You know, for example, this morning, I believe it was in the Pentagon, the uh, Pentagon uh, top people made an announcement that they are not seeking a war with Iran. Why would you telegraph that? I mean, that, that may be the case that you see privately among the generals. But to announce that to your enemy weakens you because now the enemy knows that they could push you really far and you're not going to bring it to war. So these are these are problems. And. I think also there's many theories about why Iran has gotten so much more aggressive. Another one is the fact that Khomeini is weak and he needs to rally support around the flag, or that he's gotten old and has kind of lost it and the hardliners are taking control because he's attacked Pakistan, Jordan, he's attacked American troops deliberately with an effort to kill American soldiers. These missiles are not designed to harass, they're designed to kill. Yeah, and that's exactly what they did. Um, people my age have been telling me that the world feels like it's in more chaos now than ever before in their lifetime, just out of control from the war in the Middle East to the war in Europe and the Houthi attacks in the Red Sea to the deadly Iran-backed drone strike just this weekend and reports of Iran nearing nuclear capability. Why all of this now? Well, it, it, I know it does feel like chaos, but it is controlled chaos. It's just two countries. It's it's. Russia and Iran. Not Russia to mention China, by the way. Right. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you caught me. Well, and China could be next with Taiwan. But right now we're seeing aggression from Iran and from Russia. And, you know, clearly uh, we, we need to have a much more robust response to the point that Iran needs to know that we'll go for regime change if they don't stop this. They have to know that they have something bigger to lose than what they're going to gain. And right now we have not shown them that. And I think we need to do that. You were appointed by the Biden administration as an advisor. You've you've been instrumental in the talks between Palestine and Israel. What's going on with the hostage negotiations? And will there be a ceasefire? If so, what are the ramifications to the U.S. either way? Well, Israel's in a terrible position. They're kind of damned if they do and damned if they don't. And the Israeli war cabinet is split. Half of the war cabinet says the priority has to be getting the hostages out. We didn't protect them after all. They, they have that right to be protected by the state of Israel. The priority is human life. Let's get them out first, and we'll worry about Hamas later. The other school of thought in the Israeli cabinet, because again, they split 50-50, is that no, we have to defeat Hamas first, or they're going to do this again. They announced it, and that has to be the priority. The hostages are important for us, but defeating Hamas has to be center stage on what we're going to do. So it's really a, a, a tough dilemma they're in. 
you know, the more Israel pays attention to the hostages, the more their price goes up. And Hamas knows if it were not for the hostages, Israel would even commit even more damage in Gaza. So Hamas is trying to leverage that as much as they can. And it's, it's really a sad tragedy for these poor people who are kidnapped from their homes. You even have a one-year-old child, you have elderly, mm -hmm. and Hamas is still holding them. And it's really, really a, a, a horror. Could the U.S. do more? Yeah, I think the United States needs to do more. You know, the problem is the United States is uh, pulling back from that part of the world under both administrations. You know, they mm -hmm. people, you know, they, the Biden administration, even going back to Obama, wants to focus on China. And I think this may be true of a Republican administration. But you, you can't show weakness. In this part of the world, strength is respected. Right. And if you show strength, you'll be successful. If you If you don't show strength and you're just trying to manage the conflict and they hit us, we hit them back. That's not going to work. They're going to keep on being aggressive, as we can see. And ultimately, we're, we're going to lose there. And we're going to pay a much bigger price in the future. Yeah. So we need, we need to be vigorous and stand up to our enemies. Peace through strength, which unfortunately is not going to happen uh, this year. Harley Littman, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it.